Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to My Twisted Life and TV. I am Portia. You are here for another recap and review of The Handmaid's Tale. This is season four, episode six, Vows. Um, we halfway through, y'all. We halfway through. For those of you who did not know, The Handmaid season was only slated for 10 episodes this year. Um, I know it seems like we didn't. It just started, which it did, but they put three episodes on on one night. So we kind of rushing through this. They were trying to get their Emmy um, nomination or to be uh, able to be included in on the Emmy nod. So they have to have majority of the season finished by May 31st. And I think that's the reason why they did that. Um, we have already been approved for a season five. So then, you know. Something is going to happen. Either we're going to take the fight to Gilead or Gilead is about to come after us. We're not sure which one it's going to be. Um, but I swear, y'all, this particular episode, my emotions flip-flopped all over the place. I'm going to let you know that right now. I, I was mad at everybody at some point and I was having an understanding of everybody at uh, another in the same sentence. You know what I'm saying? Um... For a second, y'all, I thought when Moira showed up that June was hallucinating. Um, but then once I thought about it, I was like, Moira's girlfriend said that they were going on a supply run, not a rescue mission. And she doggone say, didn't say she was coming to Chicago. I forgot what she said she was going, but it wasn't Chicago. So I was like, so is Moira really there? And that's what I was wondering. And we start off the episode back at their apartment when they were roommates um and i was like is she really standing there i just kept saying it um june can't believe it you know she is she's really there and but she's in total shock june is um more was like it's me moira your friend don't you remember me right june is like nah moira got out you know that's how much of a daze or like discombobulation that she's in right now and so she can't believe that she's there. She's like, I need to find Janine. Now, do y'all realize, I don't know, maybe it was just me. Hold on, let me get my lips together. <sighs> this is a lip balm that I created. Strawberry rose hip. It gives you some shine too, baby. It's just supposed to be a lip balm, but it still gives you a nice little moisturized look on your lips. And it smells so good. You can get this off my website, www.survivebeauty.com. Shot with me for your lip glosses, your lip balms, your facial scrubs, your foot scrubs, and your body baths and stuff like that. You know, Survivebeauty.com. Anywho, um, was it just me or did anybody else notice that at some point we forgot about Janine? She spent the majority of the first half of this episode looking for Janine, wondering where Janine was at. And Moira was trying to make her forget about Janine to save her own life, which is basically what June has done as a character is forget about the other people around her and save her own life. Um, in this particular incident, Moira is the one that's coaxing her because Moira is concerned for June. She wants June to get the help that she needs. A lot of y'all believe that um, Janine is still alive. And I was liking to believe that because I was like, they yeah, possibly could not have her go out like that where we don't get to see her face any longer. Um, all we got left is a memory of a fucking Cubs baseball cap that she bought for Stephen but ended up giving to June. And June don't even have that any longer. So... I was like, nah, I still feel that she's dead. And I think this episode was to make us forget about her. Because, like I say, well, I don't know if it was just me. I was just as concerned about finding Janine as June was. And then at some point, Janine was not a thought in my head until I got ready to do this damn recap. Um, I think she's dead. Uh, I think one person said that they think Steven found her and saved her. I don't know. <laughs> no, I just don't see it at all. He's not that important of a character for me. In more ways than one, Janine essentially told us as viewers goodbye last episode, I believe. And now that she's out of Chicago and her mindset is now refocused on Hannah, there's no reason for her to go back to Chicago. None. She needs to go back to Boston, to Gilead, to find Hannah. That's where she needs to take that fight. Um, 
and then just like looking at the people who were left behind in Chicago if she is sick and injured she not gonna make it or she probably won't make it you know what I'm saying um anyway June was still trying to find her and Moira was like no girl uh uh you hurt you need help but she was able to convince June that um if Janine is alive then maybe she's at the medical tent and let's go there and look for her so they was able to get her into the truck essentially try to give her her own care they said she had a concussion they just wasn't sure how severe the concussion was um and truthfully they never found out because all the commotion started happening before june herself was able to actually get into see someone for her headache once they uh along the ride june became a little lucid and realized that mora was really in her presence then she realized Mora is really in her presence like why is she on this side of the world you're supposed to be safe in Canada you're supposed to be free why are you here and Mora was like I came to find you and I did I was like okay nice speech Mora nice speech, but you did not come there to find June you did not come there to find June last you knew June was in Philadelphia being detained when, old, when Una decided to go on her mission that's the last word y'all had got y'all didn't even know she had escaped again and she had like so you didn't go to Chicago to find June that, I mean nice speech but that ain't what you did okay but anyway let's move on um we get to the, the center the aid center where the tents are at and Una is telling everybody we need to shut this shit down and we need to leave immediately um she's only got word there's supposed to be another bombing and i was like y'all intel messed up because this was supposed to be y'all cease fire right and it's going to be cease fire for the next 24 hours well moira wants to take june with them but that's not how things work with them you know she has to leave june there uh, she's like no we'll be back in another week and maybe we could try to get her out then and Moira's like, fuck that. No, we take her with us right now. We found her now. We're not coming back here in a week. She may not make it in one week. And Una says, we are not taking her. It's life or death for everybody around us right now. Not just her. Okay? And if Gilead founds out that we have her, not only are we going to not get any food, we're not going to get any medicines, we're not going to have any more missions, nothing will be allowed for the people who are left back here in Chicago. You think June is more important than everybody else? You know, she more important than any one of them? I don't give a damn that she's your best friend. <laughs> we not taking her. I was like, damn, Una, that's fucked up. But damn, Una, that's what's up. Finally, somebody spoke exactly what I've been saying this entire doggone season. As I said, I was coming flip-flopping back. I was like, damn, that's your girl's best friend. You can't take her? But damn, you right. Fuck trying to save June. We keep trying to save June and risk the lives of other people trying to save her. And I was so glad that somebody finally said it on this show. Okay, it's got to stop. It's got to stop right here and right now. But Moira, she not going to listen. She just as hard-headed as fucking June is. Like, she going to find a way to save her. But June is still on. We need to find Janine. We need to find Janine. Moira said, oh, no, we're not. That's not what we can do. She dead. If she ain't dead, she she going to be dead. You know what I'm saying? And you will be too if you stay here. Take your ass to the damn boat. You see that boat? Go for it, right? I'm not leaving without you. I'm not leaving you behind again. You can't make me do that. You can't put that guilt on my shoulders. And I was like, what you going to do, Moira? If she don't get on the boat, you going to stay there with her? Is that what you going to do? Now, June all of a sudden remembers her original goal. You can't make me leave without Hannah. Where is she? I don't know. You mean to tell me Nick didn't tell you where she at, June? The love of your life didn't give you a clue or inclination to where your child was at and try to help you reunite him? No. But he was. He didn't know where she was at and able to use her as bait. You know, he didn't know that. And then put her back in safe keeping until he needs you to do something else and pull him back out of his pocket again. Mm-mm. Maury said you done lost your damn mind. You have lost your damn mind. You don't even know where she at. You don't even know how you're going to get there. You don't even know what you're going to do. You don't even know how you're going to find her. She's like, well, they took her because of me. They took her because of me. June, that's a damn lie. They had been with them. They didn't take her because of you. They wouldn't even give it to 
to. Not at any moment. Not one moment that they was thought about they was gonna give this child to you at all. That's why they had her ass in a glass fucking cage. You were never getting Hannah. And Morris say, well, she's safer without you then. You know what I'm saying? Because they are going to hunt you down and kill you. Matter of fact, I think Morris told her they're going to kill you in front of her. But well, yeah, we all know June never dies. Shit. <laughs> then Moira tells her this bald face lie. This right here just upset me as well. If you want to fight, then come to Canada and fight. The Canadian government and the American government, what's left of them, will help you fight. I was like, oh no, the hell they won't. No, they won't. They haven't did a damn thing all this time but negotiate peace treaties and trade bargains. Hell, they already consider returning the handmaids who they consider criminals to Gilead. They are not going to help them do shit. I refuse to believe it. Now, while Moira is trying to make June get her ass on the boat, the other people out there in Canada, they getting riled up. You know, people who are wounded, you know, who have been fighting for their lives who came there for supplies and things of that nature, um, they about to turn them fences down and get inside that dog on Mission Camp. Now, they not like uh, Moira. Moira convinces June, we're going to go ahead and get on this boat, you know what I'm saying? Right as the crowd turns down the fence line. And I say, I say, I, it's a lot of points in this episode. I swear, was speaking my mind, because back at the crib, June is preparing to move out because her and Luca are about to get married. And Moira was like, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. June said, why? Why is marrying a smart, loving, good-looking man with a job a bad idea? Right? Because he cheats on his wives, you know, and he, especially when they can't reproduce. And um, it, it, when I heard it, I was like. He sound like the commander. <laughs> the commander is essentially cheating on his wife because the wife can't reproduce. And that's what that's I, that was the first and only thought that entered my head when she said that he cheats on his wives. <laughs> so they can't reproduce. But June's comeback was that one wife. It was only one. You know what I'm saying? Her denial as <sighs> because she's part of the cheatation. She is all um, convinced to herself that Luca's a better man. It must have been Annie's fucking fault. I think I was calling her Alice last time. Y'all forgive me if I did. But it must have been Annie's fucking fault that their relationship was fucked up. Luke is a good man. He's a good damn man. And this whole particular episode was trying to prove to us as viewers how good of a man Luke is. Okay? You know, we had them all figured out. We was thinking the same thing that Moira was saying. He cheats on his fucking wife when she can't reproduce. You know what I'm saying? Um, but June is like, no, not me. That's not going to be me. That's not going to be me. He loves me. He ain't love her. They fought all the dog on town. We don't fight. I can't stand June. I can't stand June, y'all. But I was like, you best believe that Una's going to have a problem when she finds out that June is on that boat. She came up to give Morris some apologies, you know, about not being able to bring her. And Morris was going to keep that shit under wraps until she found out that they had to go through a Gilead checkpoint. And they're going to search that boat from top to bottom. So Una, like, you know, I got respect for old girl, you know. But I'm the one in charge right now. And now that she done learned that June is on this boat, she's like, I need to hear from everybody what y'all think we should do. Moira was like, it's my fault. It's my fault, you know. She didn't even want to come. Yeah, it is your fault. You're exactly right, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I think she want Una to say, it's not your fault. No, it is your fault, Moira, is what Una said. But now we got to deal with your fucking problem, right? So one of the guys is like, you turn your ass in. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Because if we don't, we risk all of our future missions, and then we all fucked up from here on out. And Moira's like, no, wait, 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 wait. No, there's something else that we could do. Una said, no, 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 let me hear him out. Let's speak on it. Tell me what you need. We need to be real here, right? Um, and Moira kept on saying, you know, this is my loved one. You know, I couldn't leave her behind. We all have loved ones who who are in Gilead, but you risk everything for your loved one. Fuck everybody else's. You know what I'm saying, fuck everybody who's out here. So now you're gonna have to deal with the fallout, Moira. That's pretty much what it has to come up to. Elena was one of the girls that was on the boat. She was like, you know, no, nah, I say keep her. Let's keep her. And of course, the guy. And no, turn her in. 
And somebody, I think last time I said that, I think that they really setting the show for to make us dislike men. This is another example to me. The one woman on the boat, like, no, let's save her. And both of the men, are like, nah, turn her in, turn her in, turn her in. They paint these men as being ain't shit men, except for the ones who ain't shit. Luke ain't shit. They try to make us look at him in a positive light, like he's such this good, honorable person. Nick ain't shit. They try to make us look at him like he's this good, honorable person. The, the men, no, that he ain't shit. Mm -mm. Um, they try to trick us. They try to manipulate our minds. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Right. So, um, Moira. She like, you know, well, we can hire her in the floor. We can hire her in the lifeboats. And old boy was like, they gonna search her. She's like, how the fuck you know? You know, you ever escaped from Gilead? And I was like, no, more. He didn't escape from Gilead, but he has been on other missions, and he know where the fuck they gonna search. This your folks radio, not his, right? But why they in a debating? Um, I, the look we got that camera pan on her damn face. The look on her face already told me I'm going back. You know, what I'm saying I've made up my motherfucking mind, and that's what she told him, right? So. Another thing that caught me off guard here was that uh, Una says that once we go to this checkpoint, we got another 10 hours to Canada. And I was like, where the fuck are y'all going? How y'all doing this? Canada is just across the lake from Chicago. For real. Like, past Detroit. Um, and I was like, nine hours? It's not even that long. If you driving from Toronto, Chicago to Toronto, that's only an eight hour trip, maybe seven hours, 45 minutes. How was it taking y'all 10 hours, right? Y'all covering majority of it on boat once you hit land. Ben Harbor is where they should have docked it. Cross over Lake Michigan, docking Ben Harbor from Ben Harbor to Canada itself. It's like two and a half hours to get all the way to uh, Toronto, maybe like another five and a half, six from Ben Harbor. So where the fuck was y'all going? And I think she had mentioned something about they had a, uh, they got checked in Aleppo. Aleppo was on the other side of Toronto, so that must have been a mission from New York because you know Aleppo was not in the pathway of Chicago to Toronto. I was like, what the fuck they doing? Traveling on horseback? And we later see that they take the boat all the way to Chicago, to Toronto. Or did yeah, all the way? How they do that? You go up Lake Michigan, then you have to come around and go down Lake Erie. But from Lake Erie to Toronto, there's no waterway that I could think of. Let me Google that shit. Oh, fuck. Let me see. Let me Google that. Okay, so you would go up Lake Michigan. You come around Lake Huron. And then there's Lake Erie. There's no waterway. Oh, unless they're just going straight from Lake Michigan up to Lake Huron. And, but then they still won't be by Toronto, but they could dock somewhere on the Canadian side and then come down to Toronto. But they got off the boat in Toronto. How? How did it happen? Because you would have to take Lake Michigan to Lake Huron. There has to be some type of waterway that would go through um, Sarnia and get you to Lake Erie. And then go through Buffalo, New York to get you up to Lake Ontario, which is on the Toronto side. How you take this boat all the way around there? If y'all know, y'all up in Canada, y'all know more about the geography and the waterways. Y'all let me know because I can't see. I just go with it. I just And I'm like, you ain't finna take no damn boat from Chicago to Toronto. You don't have to go on land at some point. But they stayed on their boat. You, you have to go all the way over by Buffalo. So they would have had to go all the way from Lake Huron all the way up here Baby, you have to go all the, up there okay is there a waterway in Mackinac yeah you have to go all the way through there then take Lake Hur Huron all the way down I don't know of a waterway there is a small waterway that's right by Sarnia that would take you down to Lake St. Clair and then Lake St. Clair through Detroit and then up to Lake Erie I bet you that's longer than 10 hours I bet you it's longer I just be looking at stuff like that. I, I, be, I be picking up stuff like that. So y'all forgive me that I went off on a little tangent. Anywho, <sighs> the fact that Gilead had control of Lake Michigan pissed me off, y'all. It was their waterway, and it had to be checked at their waterway anyway. So they come to her to search the boat. The crew went upstairs, and Moira is gonna do something stupid. I was like, what? And she gonna turn herself into? Don't be that stupid. I hope good this gotten is that you don't turn yourself into. Anyway, she's pleading with Una. 
And Una's like, okay, fine. Make her ass an ID, right? Clean her up. Make sure she don't fuck this up. And I was like, you mean tell me this? All you had to do was make her a fake ID? Y'all doing all this? This bitch and crying and moaning over a fucking fake ID? Make her damn fake ID? That's it? Well, June, she crept into a Jezebel without being recognized. Remember, she talked to a dog on Martha face to face, didn't get recognized. Made it all the way into Chicago without being recognized by anyone. And at this border inspection, they gonna know her face? That didn't make sense to y'all. Y'all could have been just made her fucking ID and just moved on with it, right? I was like, who gonna be on the boat, Nick? Who gonna be on the boat? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, night is falling. And they doing ID searches on everybody. More, this is another pet peeve of mine. Maura said that she was from Toronto, born and bred. If you know people that's born and bred in Canada, and you don't live there, they have a slight accent. It's not real heavy, it's not real thick, it's not like the New York or New Jersey accent. So, you know, um, they might they don't even sound like the French side of Canada, you know, their accents are a little bit, you know, different. But more don't sound nothing like no born and bred Canadian <laughs> at all. Anyway, um, up next is June. I was like, what name did they make up for her? Well, Rachel Smith was about to blow everybody's damn cover. She had to be asked twice what the fuck her name was. Like, I know you got a concussion that we ain't figured out what's the extent of it yet, but damn it. I know you heard the man say what your name was. So she said, no, no, Rachel Smith, right? He's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? How easy would it be to say that it got rough back there with all that damn commotion? You know, them bombs had just went off. Good thing Maura ass stepped in and saved her ass, right? Did all the talking for her. So now they on their way to Canada, right? Moira... And um, she had gotten to June's head just a little bit, right? And back in the day, and back at the apartment, right? And so June started to question Luke and his vows and, and his marriage to Annie. And the only thing I got from this whole thing is that she stole Moira's god dog on picture like she stole Luke from Annie. Now, I know, I know she can't steal, was willing to walk away. I know. But in a, in, a, in a way, she stole his ass. I mean, he left the door open and he invited her in, but she had no problem settling in, okay? And claiming it as if it was always hers and rightfully so. So anyway, she brought up um, a few what ifs for him. You know what I'm saying? What if I disappoint you? What if I'm not who you think I am? And this was kind of foreshadowing the moment that she's about to have with Luke whenever they reunite. June is a different person, right? Um, will he be able to forgive her for Nick? Because remember, she told him that she was made highly out of love, right? Nicole, whatever. And um, I was like, is Luke going to be able to overcome that fact? Will June overcome that fact for that matter? Um, he, he tells her he's going to love her whoever she turns out to be. Um, but only time will tell, you know what I'm saying? Um, so again, like I said, they still traveling through both. I was just confused on where the heck they were, were where they started and where they was traveling. My brain can't function with that amount of confusion, y'all. <laughs> anyway, Una and Moira finally have it out over June. Una's like, you put everybody in jeopardy. Moira had the audacity to say, well, you the one that decided to save her. No wonder her and June friends. Y'all both in complete denial of y'all responsibility, y'all accountability in, in, in things that you do. <sighs> you just snuck her ass on the boat after Una told you not to bring her, right? And then you beg and plead Una and the rest of the crew to save her ass. But for some reason, that's Una's fault because Una decided to save her. More would say, I don't understand why this could affect us. You know what I'm saying? Una's like, Una got, got all my respect this episode. All of it. Sis was like, look her. We ain't to drag this out longer than it has to be. <laughs> we over, girl. We over. Moira was like, we can still be cool, right? Around the office. Ain't gonna be no office after this. I don't know if she meant that they gonna dissolve the office. Or maybe Moira ain't gonna be working for the office after this. Or just pretend that I don't even exist at the office. You know what I'm saying? Um... What y'all think the outcome of that is going to be? That's what I want to know. Anyway, Moira, this might get a chance for Emily and Moira to get together because a lot of people thought that this was going to happen. I did too, actually. It may be that opportunity. Well, Moira goes looking for June. She ain't in her little, her little room. Um, 
And we go all back and June is trying to steal a fucking lifeboat. June always stealing shit. Stole the damn picture. Stole look. Anyway, June says that Moira manipulated her to leave Hannah. In a way, she kind of did. But let's rewind your fucking life, June. Just days ago. Just days ago. Nick manipulated you with your own child. And there you was with hugs and kisses and love for him, right? For saving your little wretched, worthless ass. And you want to give Moira heat because she saved you too? All these people just risk it for, for June over and over again. Lives in jeopardy. Mission in jeopardy. More of their relationship over. You know what I'm saying? All because they trying to save you. And you, June, that's who I'm talking to, are ungrateful as fuck. As always. I would say this is about Hannah, but it ain't. It ain't. Because you're the one who left to go to Chicago. You you left her behind. Morbid didn't have to manipulate you to leave her behind. You left her behind to go to Chicago. You ain't had no plan to go back for then. Why you didn't talk Nick into helping you get it? Why you didn't tell, make Nick tell you where she was at? She's safe. Where is safe, Nick? Where is safe? Anywho. Now all of a sudden you think... Um, this Morris fault that Hannah's left her. And now you care about what Luke think. Luke ain't thought about Hannah his damn self. You know what I'm saying? If he gonna be mad at you, he ain't gonna be mad at you didn't get her. He, Cause like I said, he ain't thought about her. And it's not like that he's, you know, got ill feelings towards Holly. I'ma call the baby Holly. I be calling her Jelly Bean most of the time. But I ain't gonna call her fucking Nicole. That ain't her damn name. Anyway, he ain't tripping off the fact that his own child ain't around. You know, sometimes you may have some type of like, you know, Animosity. Why you hear him not my child? I, I probably would feel that way. You know what I'm saying, but you know, more was like, how about let's go find out what he feels? Okay, fine. So she'll do that. So they flash back to the the point where she tells him that she's pregnant. I don't know. Is Elizabeth Moss pregnant for real during this season? Because she's been wearing a lot of big clothes that seems like they're trying to cover her belly. I wonder if she's pregnant for real. Y'all, let me know if y'all know. And um. But I could have sworn we already saw the episode where she told him that she was pregnant, about to have a baby. And they were sitting there having dinner. I forgot what the heck dinner was. I think it was like, I think it was like Caesar salads or something. And the candles were lit. I remember that. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but that's why I could have sworn we already saw the episode where she told him that she was pregnant. It went outside the damn apartment. But anywho, they, they made it to Canada, y'all. You know, she's still on the boat, but somehow Luke already know that she had arrived. I don't know how they got the word to him. They did not hold each other long enough for me. They didn't. He walked out, um, and he like 10 steps ahead of her, you know? I don't know, but if it was my loved one, fuck it, I know. If it was my loved one, I would hold them so tight that I would want to let them go, y'all. I'm saying? We'd be squished up walking down that gangway together all the way off the boat, you know what I'm saying? But no, mm-mm. And for some reason... I thought that they were going to have like a big parade or something, you know. People was going to be standing all around cheering. Oh my God, you know, the one who did the angel fight is finally here. You know, something like that. But no. She stepped off and just breathed. And stared into the camera. And then we got a close-up. I was so mad. I was like, Handmaid's Tale. Elizabeth Moss. For that damn close-up. Oh, that made me so doggone mad. That was the end of the episode, y'all. That was vows. Like I said, I, my emotions flip-flopped. It wasn't even my emotions. Just my thought process was flip-flopping back and forth. Um, like, to, like, to sum it all up, I understood why Moira wanted to save her friend. But she was acting just like June in this, in this moment. She didn't give a fuck about nobody else that was left there or left behind. Just make sure you take her. How, not let's, let's help get some of these other people on this boat. Just make sure she go. And she got her on that damn boat and risked everybody's life, well-being, and then blamed it on Una. Like, well, you the one that agreed. She's, that's why they friends. That's why they fucking friends. Right? So, I wonder what's going to happen now. I'm about to eat a snack cake, a zebra cake. I wonder what's going to happen now when they get up there. Um, Like, they, couldn't, they didn't really have words. Like, she apologized to Luke for having not been there. He's like, I'm not worried about that. Oh, y'all, he would. He would. This has been a hand jail.
Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being patient. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.